Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm super thrilled to speak with Sharona Jacobs today. Sharona, Sharona goes by the the expression she's that that she's a Boston's literary photographer. I'm I'm so curious to know what that means, actually. That I said, let's talk. The other thing I wanted to talk to her about is her forthcoming Inspire Photo Retreats presentation. She's going to be speaking at Inspire the second time around this time, and I wanted to say. Let's talk about everything really under the sun in the next 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Why not? Why not, right? Let's um, do it. Sharona, you're in Boston. Uh, yeah. you, uh, you are, you're calling yourself Boston's literary photographer. What does that mean? Oh, I, I don't call myself that. I've been very kindly named that. Oh, you're kindly? Grub okay, Street. great. Yes, yeah. yes. Grub Street is a very, very large, naturally known writer's organization in Boston that I have worked with a lot. And I currently have um, an ongoing show there as well. Um, so what does that mean? I am a uh, portrait photographer. I do editorial portraits and I do commercial portraits. And I happen to be very fortunate to photograph a lot of the writers that make up the culture of Boston. Fantastic. Well, but you weren't always a photographer. Talk uh, to us a little bit about your background. How did you get started in photography? So I joke that I was a photographer turned shrink turned back photographer again. Um, so I started off a family of photographers. I'm sure you hear that from many, many people. Uh, my grandfather, actually, we have huge generational gaps. He was born in 1895, and he actually documented World War I and the trench warfare using stereoscopic, stereoscopic um, glass slides. And my father also was a professional photographer to make his way through college in England. And then, so it was part of the family ethos, and so I started very, very young, went to school for design and photography at Carnegie Mellon, and I studied also Pittsburgh filmmakers. And then later on, uh, I worked in industry and then went back to school to study counseling psychology at Boston College uh, for my graduate work. And then several years later, after being a mental health clinician and then changing into career counseling, I came back and I started my current business. Okay, so you've jumped from photography to mental health counseling back to mm -hmm. photography, uh, yes. which... It really intrigues me. Why the jumps uh, out of it photography and then back the in? Time. It makes okay, okay. <laughs> no, so it, there was a long progression. I'd always been interested in counseling. Yeah. I, you know, even as a kid, I did peer counseling things like that in high school and college, and then I've also volunteered on various mental health uh, hotlines. And I had been working in um, design for several years after graduating from my undergraduate. And I just felt compelled to come back to that after working in creative services and uh, worked uh, as a mental health clinician, worked as a career counselor. And then uh, when I was working at MIT in my last job before I started my business, I started shooting things here and there. People would ask for headshots. They'd see my camera. One thing led to another. And here I am. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, you are a published uh, author yourself. You've, you've published a, a paper called Mindfulness as a Coping Mechanism for Employment Uncertainty. Yes. That's a, that's a mouthful. Say it five times fast. I know, right? Uh, wh who is it really meant for? Who is that for? Who is that for? So it is meant, when, when it was published, I believe it was 2006, it was when the recession was really affecting a lot of people. And so it is aimed towards that, that it was just sort of the beginning of the mindfulness movement. Mm -hmm. And so it was really aimed at a lot of what was going on with the American economy. However, in hindsight, when I look back at it, it especially applies to freelancers and, of course, photographers, photographers. because we live in a very uncertain world. Absolutely. Uh, and, and your topic at Inspire this time around is really about that, real, right? It is very keyed into that, yes. And the topic is the mental health toolkit coping tools for stressed out photographers. Which is everybody, right? Which so. is everybody, absolutely. Yeah. I've been reading uh, several books on this as well, uh, but tell me about your presentation. What is it that you're gonna tell us or teach us? Maps, give us a little bit of a, uh, a hint. Sure, sure. So basically what I'm trying to do is help photographers find different ways to approach their various stressors and also change some of the ways they think about them as well. Because the funny thing about stress is that it has the same effect on our, on our sympathetic nervous system, our fight or flight response, um, as positive things as well. So you can take the beating of your heart, you can take the increased uh, respiration rate, and you can either translate it as, 
oh no, or I am getting ready, I'm excited, because the actual physiological response is the same. It's how we interpret it that changes our experience. Indeed. So as far as the, the, the potential to be st completely stressed out and then yeah. break down, a lot of photographers uh, experiences and they, you know, they call it burnout or whatever, right? right? Uh, right. And then move on to one from one genre of photography to another type of photography, just to get get a get away from whatever that was stressing them out. I guess you know, uh, what in terms of what perhaps what what can photographers do to identify those stresses in li their life and then perhaps reduce those stresses. I, I don't want you to give away the entire presentation, sure. of course, but sure. give us at least one or two, maybe three uh, things that, that happen to most photographers and perhaps tips that I could learn and I could use in my own life right now where I could say, <laughs> well, this is what Sharona taught me, you know, and so I'm a little less stressed out. So as far as identification is concerned, I am a big fan of the old fashioned notebook and writing it down because so often we all carry everything up here and um, it just gets it just gets clogged. So I say the first thing is write it down. If writing things down doesn't work for you, go discuss it with another person that you trust. Um, so that's the first part of identification. And we could talk about a million things that photographers are currently facing and, you know, one size does not fit all. But the fact that it is an uncertain environment, there isn't a whole lot of stability we don't have benefits. There's a lot of things out there that affect all of us that in many people is going to translate into stress and eventual burnout over time. So your first question was, how do I first just get this out of there and out? Mm -hmm. So I would say, write it down, talk to a trusted friend, talk to a coach, talk to a counselor, but whatever way feels best for you. Because as I said, there's no one size fits all approach. After that, you can take a, a couple different approaches. You can either take the approach of I'm going to deal with this from a cognitive or thinking perspective or I'm going to deal with this in controlling how my body is reacting so or a somatic of the body perspective. So in terms of thinking, there's a lot of different cognitive or cognitive behavioral approaches you can take. And I will go into all of those. Well, not all. I can't. I'm only there for 90 minutes. All right. But I'll go into several <laughs> of them. And, and we're going to go and practice through them as well. Or you can go into a somatic response where you can say, okay, I can do visualization exercises. I can do breathing exercises. I can do mindfulness-based meditation if that's your bag. But there are all these different approaches that I'm going to list and we're going to practice some of them so people can find out what fits best for them. Awesome. So, so as far as you know, my, my son came home one day and he's, he was maybe about six or seven years old and he came up to me and he said, we're doing mindful breathing at school. That's amazing. I was like, what? Are you serious? I, and I said, why? And he goes, I don't, he didn't know he didn't have a real answer for, for me, to be honest with you. But he yeah. said, hey, this is how you do it. And he showed me and it was amazing, really. <laughs> you oh, know? wow. And That's... the fact the fact that he was able to not only learn it at school and then come home and teach me how to do it was phenomenal. I thought that it was like, is, well, that's a, that's quite the bridge, isn't it? That is amazing. I wish five years ago that I mean, this is so great. It's, it's great. Like the next generation is teaching you. That's, that's right. Exactly. That's um, you, you're coming to Inspire for the second time. Uh, this is your second year, second time actually presenting as well. Mm -hmm. And you had uh, the first session, the first presentation was on what exactly? What, what did you cover the first time around? It was called Getting Unstuck, Finding Your Compass to Find Your Purpose in Your Business. So um, it, it is somewhat related. I think some of the things, the things that prompted me to do this discussion was pulled out of that presentation. There were so many people saying, okay, I'm getting unstuck, I'm getting stuck, I know my next steps, but how do I deal with this overwhelming feeling? So that's where this presentation came out of. Mm -hmm. um, so it's almost finishing what I started in a sense. Though I should also note, I present, this will be my second time presenting, but I also attended Inspire before I presented, which that's what made me want to come back. T give us an idea as to what your experience has been like with Inspire. I mean, as, a, as, a, as an attend attendee rather than a presenter, what do you typically find at Inspire that brings you back? Oh my goodness, it is such a warm and supportive atmosphere um, especially coming from a more 
commercial editorial background, the amount of support from the portrait and wedding photographers blew my mind. I thought it was unbelievable. Um, the people were just wonderful. There was no sense of competition, just sort of helping each other. Indeed. Uh, such a great experience, which is why I wanted to come back. Wonderful. Well, this year I look forward to meeting you and talking to you about all of the all of the topics we've just discussed, really, because it's uh, such a such an amazing thing to really to even just explore uh, whether you're stressed out or not. Really, you need to talk about this uh, because as human beings, we are always you know, under stress, under sure. stress in yeah. some way or the other. Yeah. Right. So yes, thanks. Thanks for coming to Inspire again and talking about uh, really about mental health. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.